Welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel Automotive Edition with Professor DIY. If this is the first time you're visiting our channel, I want to extend to you a very, very warm welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Do you have a car that under heavy acceleration or going up this hill is uh, buckling under the pressure? It doesn't want to accelerate or misfires? Stay tuned because today we're going to talk to you about how to troubleshoot this and how to fix a car that only under heavy acceleration it's hesitating and or misfires but at all other times it is absolutely perfect it idles very well and it shows no other symptoms that something might be wrong once again we're going to explain to you the whole process and how to repair it i recently had in my engine on my volkswagen cc a rather frustrating <laughs> even though very interesting problem. Under heavy acceleration or when throttle was required, for example, maintaining a speed up a hill, the car would make a jerking, it almost felt like a transmission thing, which came out after troubleshooting and solving some smaller problems to be demonstrated to be a misfire. But would not even throw code, it was that quick. Enough to be a settling, but was very quick. So not, not a very serious problem it seemed. But because initially I thought it was a transmission, I started paying attention to it. So when you troubleshoot something like that, start with the easiest things first. And one of the easiest things is to, to clean your mass airflow sensor. And the mass airflow sensor is located right here in the car. It will always be located before your throttle body and somewhere between your throttle and your air filter, which in this car is here. And it looks like this. It doesn't always look like this. Sometimes actually it looks rather different. And I will put another example of what, how a mass airflow cleaner might look like, like. And if you're unclean, unclear, one of the characteristics is that you will have three, four, or five. Again, three, four, or five um, pins. If it only has two, I'm sorry, four, five, or six pins, not three, four, or five. Four, five, or six pins. And this one has five. Many of them will look like this, and some of them will look slightly different like the picture above. So I first cleaned this, and if you clean your master flow cleaner, a master flow sensor, you must only use mass airflow sensor cleaner. Do not use anything else, no matter what you hear on the internet. Do not use body, uh, body throttle body cleaner, and do not use absolutely anything else. You can actually damage the mass airflow. In my car, I had another issue and another sensor that looked like a mass airflow sensor, but went directly into my intake manifold, as you can see. But it did not meet the criteria. As you can see, it only has two wires, not four, five, or six. So I, know it was, I knew it was not a mass airflow sensor, but after investigation, I found was the air charge temperature sensor. The air charge temperature sensor, yours may or may not have that sensor. So I cleaned that as well, and I cleaned that using electronics cleaner. It is safe to clean. Most everything is safe to clean with electronic cleaner. And of course, your throttle body, you need to do is throttle body cleaner. But do not use anything but mass airflow cleaner for your mass airflow. That is a very, very critical component. And here's the interesting thing. After every cleaning, after I cleaned this, and after I cleaned the mass airflow sensor, there was a, a very notable improvement in the car, but it did not go away. It just became less frequent and it felt less, I will use the word violent here, though, even though it was not violent, but it was definitely much less pronounced. So that became of a very, very interesting as well. Why it became less pronounced, I, I really didn't know. So I, I kept troubleshooting and troubleshooting. I knew it was not my transmission, my transmission. I knew it was not a very serious problem with the engine. You do not want, of course, to have back, uh, not backfires. I lost my train of thought. You do not want to have uh, misfires is what I was trying to say here. But for some reason, my brain will not cooperate. And here is what this sensor looks like the sensor here and again as you can see it only has two 
it only has two connectors, which means it is not a mass airflow sensor. It kind of looks like a mass airflow sensor. Mass airflow sensors typically look like this, some of them, but clearly it is not. So misfires can be caused by this and can be caused by mass airflow sensors. And in my case, while replacing those two valves, first of all, it's very inexpensive, very easy to do. So I, I went ahead and did it. The car has 130,000 miles. It didn't do any harm to make those replacements. So it, it really depends on you. And cleaning them is fairly inexpensive. I first cleaned them, I, I noticed improvement, then replaced them, I noticed further improvement, but the problem persisting. So what else could it have been? If you do not have an OBD reader, this can be maddening because in my case, I did not have any check engine lights. For most cars, a flashing check engine light indicates misfires. Static check engine light is not very serious, but a flashing one can indicate much more serious problems, including misfires. And I decided to see if I can make it give me a code, because even my OBD reader could not detect any codes in the engine. So when it start doing thus, when it start misfiring, instead of letting go of the accelerator, I actually press it, push it further and further, so it will give me enough misfires to throw a code. And sure enough, it gave me the misfire flashing engine light code. But while I knew now for a fact that I had misfires, I was not really sure why. I was not sure what was happening. Now, incidentally, because I like to have data for my cars, I have a volt and temperature meter uh, plugged in at all the times. And as you can see, this is right now gives me 13.9, which is a normal temperature. But I noticed that it was hovering at about 13.1. Now that was very, very interesting and I could not figure out why. And I also noticed that when I was turning my AC on, it was really dropping. So that led me to a spark plug. I know many of you say, okay, I would have started with the spark plugs, but because I did have no codes, I did not start with the spark plugs. Therefore, I changed the cylinder one spark plug and the problem went completely away. A long story to say that it was the, the most typical problem or the most typical solution, but also to say that my problem clearly was not just the spark plug because cleaning the sensors and eventually replacing the sensors definitely make a notable improvement in my symptoms. I do hope that you find this episode useful and if you do, we'll appreciate a thumbs up. If you don't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let me know what else you might want to watch in our automotive series. From the Professor DIY and the Urban Home Studying Channel, stay safe, friends.